next problem is show that integral a to b dx divided by x minus a whole raised to p converges if p less than 1 and diverges if p greater than or equal to 1. Once again I repeat show that integral a to b dx divided by x minus a whole raised to p converges if p less than 1 and diverges if p greater than or equal to 1. Here we have to show that the given improper integral integral a to b dx divided by x minus a whole raised to p converges p less than 1 and diverges if p greater than or equal to 1. First of all we consider the integral. Here the integral is 1 by x minus a all raised to p. Here the integral is 1 by x minus a all raised to p. Which becomes infinity. Which becomes infinity at the lower limit x is equal to a. Putting at x is equal to a the limit 1 divided by a minus a that is 1 by 0 that will be infinity. The integral is infinity at the lower limit x is equal to a. Then we say that the given improper integral has an infinite discontinuity at x is equal to a. So the integral a to b dx divided by x minus a all raised to p can be written in the form this result. That is integral a to b f of x dx is equal to limit epsilon tends to 0 plus a plus epsilon to b f of x dx. So, we can write this integral as the form limit epsilon tends to 0 plus integral. Here a is a. Therefore, we can write a plus epsilon to b f of x here 1 by x minus a all raised to p dx. Clear? Then limit epsilon tends to 0 plus integral a plus epsilon to b x minus a all raised to minus p. We can write it as x minus a all raised to minus p dx. Next we integrate limit epsilon tends to 0 plus x minus a all raised to minus p uh, can be integrated as x minus a all raised to minus p plus 1 minus p plus 1 divided by minus p plus 1. Limit a plus epsilon to b. Equal to limit epsilon tends to 0 plus putting the limit upper limit is b therefore b minus a all raised to minus p plus 1 divided by minus p plus 1 minus lower limit a plus epsilon putting here x a plus epsilon minus a that is epsilon epsilon raised to minus p plus 1 divided by minus p plus 1 clear then next separating the limit we get limit Epsilon tends to 0 plus b minus a all raised to minus p plus 1 divided by 1 minus p minus epsilon raised to minus p plus 1 divided by 1 minus p. Sorry, minus limit epsilon tends to 0 plus epsilon raised to minus p plus 1 divided by 1 minus p. Here, first limit, limit epsilon tends to 0 plus b minus a whole raised to minus p plus 1 divided by 1 minus p. Here, b is constant, a is constant and p is constant. Therefore, this um, simplification form is also a constant. Therefore, applying limit, we get that constant b minus a whole raised to minus p plus 1 divided by 1 minus p minus epsilon raised to, sorry, limit epsilon tends to 0 plus 
epsilon raised to minus t plus 1 divided by 1 minus t. Putting this equation number 1. Okay. Clear? Write it. That is equal to. First, we consider this result. Result number two. Eps, limit epsilon tends to zero plus epsilon raised to minus t plus one equal to zero if p less than one, and infinity if p greater than one. Then, the integral. This integral can be written in the form integral a to b dx divided by x minus a all raised to p equal to then putting p less than 1 here in equation 1 we get this portion 0 once again I repeat if p less than 1 limit epsilon tends to 0 plus epsilon minus epsilon raised to minus p plus 1 equal to 0 that means this is equal to 0 Therefore, this portion is 0. Then the remaining portion is this. B minus A all raised to minus P plus 1 divided by 1 minus P. Which is P less than 1. Again, P less than 1, the limit epsilon tends to 0 plus epsilon raised to minus P plus 1 is 0. Therefore, this portion is 0. Then the remaining part is B minus A all raised to minus P plus 1 divided by 1 minus p. Therefore, we say that the integral a to b dx divided by x minus a or raised to p uh, uh, ha have the solution uh, b minus a or raised to minus p plus 1 divided by 1 minus p if p less than 1. Next, the sec uh, result, if p greater than 1, this value limit epsilon tends to 0 plus epsilon raised to minus p plus 1 is infinity. If p greater than 1, this, this portion is infinity. Therefore, uh, subtraction uh, minus is also infinity. Therefore, if p greater than 1, this portion is infinity. That is, we understand that in the relate to b dx divided by x minus a whole raised to p, if p less than 1, b minus a divided by 1 minus p, b minus a whole raised to minus p plus 1 divided by 1 minus p. If p greater than 1, this value is infinity. Clear? Right. Converges if p less than 1 and diverges and diverges if p greater than 1. We get in the relate to b dx divided by x minus a whole raised to p converges if p less than 1 and diverges if p greater than 1. Now we have to show that this integral diverges if p equal to 1. Therefore we can put p equal to 1 in this integral. We get integral a to b dx divided by x minus a. That is equal to. Here the integrand is x minus a and when putting a uh, x is equal to a, that is the lower limit x is equal to a here, we get the integrand infinity. Therefore, we can say that it has an infinite distinguity at step x is equal to a. Therefore, this can be uh, written in the uh, using the above result. Uh, limit epsilon tends to 0 plus integral a plus epsilon to b dx divided by x minus a. That is equal to limit epsilon tends to 0 plus what is integral uh, 1 by x minus a. That is log log x minus a. Putting a plus epsilon to b. a plus epsilon to b. 
then that is equal to is equal to limit epsilon tends to 0 plus this is log b minus a minus log putting a plus epsilon here a a get cancelled we get log epsilon that is equal to limit epsilon tends to 0 plus log b minus a minus log 0. Log 0 is infinity therefore this side becomes infinity. Therefore we can say that the above integral is diverges if t is equal to 1. Therefore integral a to b dx divided by x minus a whole raised to p whole raised to p diverges diverges if t equal to 1 if t equal to 1 so we can say that integral a to b dx divided by x minus a whole raised to p converges if t less than 1 and diverges if t greater than or equal to 1.